for our long extended home break. And it's really, um, it wasn't really hard to use. You just reshape the slide and uh, change the dimensions. And I printed it out, it uh, worked great. And I'm sure I'll be using that more and more uh, since I have uh, some things that are PDFs and I'm gonna need to change them so that my students can work from home, unfortunately. Okay, so um, like I said, that video is gonna walk you through. I am gonna show this video right here. Now, if you notice that when I uh, hovered over this video, do you see that little pop out arrow? This tells me it will open the presentation into full screen, okay? And I borrowed <laughs> this presentation. It was on the web. You see I'm crediting Jennifer um, Sheffer for creating this. And we're going to look at some of the ways to use Google Slides. Okay. So, of course, you can do presentations in front of a live audience and they have a new thing. Um, they came out a couple of years ago. It's called Q&A. Um, you can kind of see it right down here. And what that does is allows you to get feedback from the audience with questions or comments without interrupting you. And then you will see them on your screen and you can address any issues that go along. So that can be really cool if you're doing a, a uh, virtual meet sort of like this and you want to, you're getting information to your students. Um, so, or when you're back face to face. Um, another thing, do exit and entrance tickets. So you can kind of project this up on the screen, um, put a question up there for students to answer before they leave or as they come in, as you finish a lesson. Uh, I use it sometimes for my daily schedule, uh, my agenda for the day. Uh, you can use that as an icebreaker. Um, I've used Google Slides and had the slideshow uh, continuously loop. When we had open house or course fair a couple of weeks ago, I put together a slideshow for our history department, different things that we do, the courses that were offered, and had it playing the night of course fair, and it just continuously looped. And that was really cool for parents and students to be able to see some of the things that we get to do in a classroom instead of just talking about it. Group projects can be done through these presentations. Um, you can collaborate just like you do on a Google Doc. More people, uh, multiple people can be working on the slide at the same time. Um, and here she has a link to the uh, global, uh, sorry, global art project that uh, was done from people all over the world. Uh, art that they used doing Spheros. Spheros are little round robots. And it was really kind of cool. So you don't even have to collaborate just with people in your class. It could be people across the country, in other schools within the county, uh, everywhere. You can create storybooks. Uh, I've done this with um, some high school classes that were some lower level students and I had them write a storybook, a story about, at the time um, I was teaching world history and so we chose a uh, group called the Incas or the Mayas or the Aztecs, early American civilizations, and they had to take an information and create their own children's story uh, with pictures. So you can insert pictures from the internet. You can also upload pictures that students draw. And then you can print those out and share them with classmates. Uh, have them go and read. That's what I had my students do. I took them to an elementary school and had them read their stories to uh, a, a class of students or several classes of students. Okay, um, you can make digital note cards. You can change the background color. So your information can be color coded. Uh, so if it's history things, it could be, your screen can be one color. If it was science, it could be another color. Um, you can put these on Classroom. Uh, works, of course, because Google Classroom is a Google feature. This is Google. Um, you can create a template and have the students make their own flashcards with vocabulary and definitions or uh, make sentences with them, etc. cetera. Whoops. Um, again, vocabulary list, uh, insert images, 
uh, share with other students for peer review, peer learning. So you could divide up the task and you could have several students working, um, working together at, on the same program, even from home. Now, I am not going to, this in animation is really pretty quick, and I'm going to show you this animation. And uh, this was all done through uh, Google Slides, and it's amazing to me what they accomplished. Now, I could never do this here. You see them sharing the, um, sharing it with other people. They're adding drawings into uh, slides. So I thought that was really um, pretty cool, uh, that what you can do there. Uh, you can flip your classroom and Screencastify. I love Screencastify. And if you want more information on that, I'm happy to do a PD on that or talk with you individually about Screencastify. And it is a Chrome extension. Um, I have it uploaded right up here uh, on my device. And... That's how I record myself going over notes for my students. So whether um, they're at home, whether they're in class, they can listen to it. They can watch this over and over and over again to help them get the information. OK, and it saves it in Drive. You can send it uh, via Google Classroom. You can just give them the code or I upload it to YouTube and easily insert it into uh, on my Google Sites and students can watch it from there. Great way to connect with parents. Uh, create a presentation like I was telling you with our um, course fair the other night and in doing that. Um, you can integrate other Google apps like drawings, dots, charts, graphs, etc. And like I say, you can edit, create images, recolor things. I, I'm definitely not to this point yet, um, but it is. these are some of the things that you can do. Um, you can detail step-by-step -step directions. So for those kids that need chunking, for um, our kids with IEPs or things like that, and they need step-by-step -step directions, this is how you can do this for them. Step one and on one slide. Once they do that, then they can go to the next slide and do slide two. Sometimes when we put it in a list for them, they look at the list and just freak out because it's too much. So this would be a way to uh, help them. And of course, here is another link to um, how it's used. Creating comic strips. Do you have kids that like to draw? And uh, kids of all ages love comics or uh, the uh, books that are kind of done in comic form. So here you can create uh, a table with columns and rows, increase the size, the width of the border, and have your kids create a comic about something that you're learning. Have them do a reflection or a journal. They can upload videos of themselves. Teacher can make comments on this. And of course, it can also be shared with parents. Uh, slides can be viewed non-sequentially, become interactive. This is how, again, you can do this, uh, making training videos, present different presentations, 
Um, again, I'm not going to go through all of this, but I just want to show you some of the things. A digital yearbook. So for teachers, especially of maybe elementary students or teachers who have a lot of hands-on things uh, going on in their classroom, a lot of collaboration, taking pictures and putting that together for students and, you know, as a yearbook for how their year went of third grade or fifth grade or ninth grade in your classroom. That's a pretty cool idea. Um, you can create your own slide master so that you, uh, it appears, every slide appears just as the way you want it. Um, put your morning announcements. Like I said, I use it for my um, agenda a lot. And here's a cool one to create a Jeopardy game. And most Every teacher can use this. You put in your questions, you put in the answers, the template is already there. You just use it. So that's a great way to go and review. Um, embedding the video from Drive, muting the audio, autoplay when presenting, um, as you see, and digital thank you cards. Okay. So you could actually create this and you can send someone this digital thank you card if somebody came and did something great for your class. Uh, so uh, are there any questions? I'm going to stop here and go back to chat and see if you have any questions that I need to answer in the comments. Um, let's see. You can, um, Trish, you can add sound and music to your slides. Yes, you can. Um, and so that many of the kids will know how to do more of this than, than I do. Um, I learn a lot from them, just like some of them learn from me. And so, yes, you can add sound to them. Um, you can add your voice on, on the slide uh, explaining it. Okay. Uh, Yes, Jill, I signed up for the beta version of the Screencastify for students to send videos back. And so I'm uh, getting ready to try to figure out how to implement that into my lessons. Um, the animation, Janie, I think is how fast it's kind of like the, the books where you flip the pages and, you know, it goes. Um, from what I understand, that would be how you did that animation. Uh, just set it to play each slide transition to the next and it would be, you know, within half a second or whatever it is. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. One of the things that I had, um, I've done with students before, uh, Candace, uh, yeah, you can have students add slides to an assignment. Yes. I actually had students, I created a PowerPoint or a slideshow in Google Slides and um, 1920s. And I gave them a list of topics. And if you got number one, you had slide one. If you got number two, you had slide two. And so students, so number one might be flappers of the 1920s. So whoever had slide one had to create a slide um, that was about the flappers, information, pictures, things like that, and might even take them to a video that the students created. So there could be links on there, all kinds of things. And so when we were done as a class, we had the whole list of 1920s information and each student or pairs of students had created this information. And so we could share it with the entire class and great way to uh, get through some of the information without being bogged down with time. Um, let's see, would slides be better than to use for um, HyperDocs choice boards? I, I have used slides for choice boards, yes. Um, is it better than docs? It's more what you're, uh, uh, more what you're comfortable with, I guess I should say. Um, I, I like slides and students, you can kind of put what's up there. You can put a description, you can put the link up there, you can put a picture, you can put a description of what is going on at that link for the HyperDoc and then they can go. And the great thing about this is 
you can send the students the link to the slides or embed it somewhere. Like I put it on my Google site for all my students to be able to see and they can work at their pace. And that's one of the great things that um, about slides that, that I've been doing is that students have been able to work at their own pace, so to speak. They still have deadlines, but they're able to work at their own pace. So those that finish faster, they can move on to the next assignment. And those that are a little bit slower uh, have a little more time to complete it. And I'm not holding up the entire class or moving past a lot of students um, with that. Um, and I thank Katie Page for helping. She stepped in this morning to help me answer uh, some of your questions here. Um, okay, so, all right. Looks like maybe I've answered most of your questions. And so I'm going to move on and I'm gonna go back here to, um, and we're gonna go to Nearpod. Now, Nearpod is a really cool thing if, if you've never used Nearpod. And there's two ways to use Nearpod. You can do a live lesson or you can do self-paced. So if uh, some of you would kind of maybe um, click, this is the link to Nearpod, or you can go to nearpod.com and um, type in the live lesson code. You'll see it says, like right here, it says students. You'll see it and you'll type in the code and it will take you to our Nearpod lesson. I'd love for at least a few of you, I'm going to be doing it through my computer but for some of you, it would be really cool for you to see the student version of the live lesson. Okay. Um, also here, uh, some one of the new things that on the student version is the Nearpod notes. Okay. I just found this when I was uh, preparing for this presentation. Students can go in, when you see that little notes symbol there, for every slide that is on there. So students can decide, send them an email with the notes, save it to Google Drive, which is what I would recommend a lot of them to do. So if they click save to drive, then right down here, there's the slide and they would type any notes that they have from the information that's on that slide, from the video, uh, et cetera. And then when they're done, they can go into Drive and the entire presentation is there and the notes. So this was the slide and there were notes down here. Okay, so that is really, really cool. You could actually have the students then share that with you so you know that they went through the document. Okay, and so I think that's a, a really, really cool uh, new feature that I found with that. Okay, and there's a little explanation. So I am hoping that many of you have, uh, some of you have at least gone into the live lesson. All right. So when you see this, this is the code. You can see that you can email it to students, um, send them the link, put it in Google Classroom, send it out through Remind. Um, so there's lots of ways to get the code out to people. Now, um, on my view, you can, if you look, um, I know some of you are having to kind of flip between tabs if you're doing the live version. Down here, 11 of you have signed up. And you can see the, the heads of the people and I can actually click on that and see who has signed up. So when I'm doing a live version with my class, I can go in and see exactly who is in and who is not in. And notice that they're green, which tells me that they are active. If it's another color, then they haven't been active. And here it says hide students' names. So if I click this, as we go through, you'll see that there are activities and I can hide the student name and be able to um, push something out to you so that we can discuss an answer. OK, so what is Nearpod? Nearpod is a student engagement uh, platform. OK, and uh, it's web based. You just need a login code. You don't need to go to the website necessarily. You just need a login code and uh, the Teacher paced mode um, is in the free version. The self paced mode is in the premium version. But right now, Nearpod has opened it up. And if you let me know 
it would probably, we could put you under Currituck County High School if you're not in the high school, but you have free access to the premium version while we're in this predicament of virtual learning. Okay. Um, students can use an iPad, tablet, Chromebook, in addition to their computer, and they can even use a phone. If uh, you were in a classroom with students or have them all online together, again, you can use the teacher paced mode, which is what I'm doing. Uh, if you need to have them work independently, then there's the self paced mode. All right. So how can I use Nearpod? Well, one way to use Nearpod is by using uh, Google Slides. You can take a Google Slide presentation and upload it into Nearpod. All right. Students can see information on their screen. So if you notice, if you're in the live version, you can't uh, move to another screen. I control how you move, okay? So that means students can't jump ahead and therefore no student is necessarily left behind, okay? You control the page. This is easily converted uh, to Nearpod. It's just a click of a few buttons, that's it. So, um, Less uh, lessons here, uh, personal provision. If you need to have a student that needs some specialized attention, uh, some differentiation, then this is where you can create a lesson, a review lesson for a student, maybe who was out right before the week we went home and they missed all this information or you're afraid that they're gonna backslide. So you can assign this to one student, a group, or the entire class. Um, so uh, let's see, this could uh, help visually impaired students or uh, like I say, students that need differentiation. Uh, how can I use Nearpod? Of course, di different uh, distributing resources. Sorry, um, having trouble talking. Uh, remember that uh, slide presentation where I told you that students could, um, I gave them the project on the 1920s. Okay, so you can fill my presentation with images, have students uh, respond to those, uh, link videos, have them watch those videos at a particular point, and right down there, I tell you how to screenshot. Uh, students can screenshot their Chromebooks by pressing the control, and that little button right there, it's above the number six, okay? Um, again, you can do this as a live lesson, there are quizzes that students uh, can take and you can use those as formative or um, summative assessment. You see the data in real time and I can project a student's answer without their name and maybe discuss why it's right, wrong, indifferent, okay? So it's time for those of you online to take a quiz, <laughs> okay. So you should see a quiz on, um, and this is where typically I would hide the names. So as students take this quiz, it's gonna show up here on my screen um, how, who answered. So it tells me who's in. And so I can see what's going on. I can see people answering question number one and see here it's telling me correct, incorrect, and I'll explain why some of those say incorrect <laughs> in just a second. Um, and so then we can go in and look. So when I project it out in a few minutes, uh, I'll hide student names so nobody will know uh, who said what. <laughs> you can see it on my screen, but you won't be able to see it on the student screen. And that's really pretty cool. So when you see a student that has incorrect thinking, you can kind of go in and explain uh, why it's wrong.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of share out. So if I click the share button, um, we can see this. I can hide students' names. See, it blanks out the name so you don't know who answered what. So if I look at question number one, I'll uh, look at the picture attached. Um, how is this how you feel about virtual learning? I kind of clicked all of those as correct answers because I knew some of you would say uh, all of these. Yes, no, sort of. Um, and so if I can go in and look and see what you put, I click them all. And that's why it said they were wrong no matter what you put. OK, um, the second question and I did that. That's just so you can see the picture. You can add pictures or videos and then have them answer questions. And it says Google Slides can be used in what ways? And teacher presenting information, student displaying information, flashcards, really they're all right, okay? So they all could be ways in which to use Google Slides, okay? So I click close and I can see what students did. Now, if I wanted to push out an answer, I could take somebody and push out this person's answer. And so this person is very confident um, in virtual learning. They're not uh, intimidated by some of this virtual learning. Uh, some of us are, um, some of us aren't, and some of us are kind of sort of uh, getting the hang of it. Okay. So that's real time data that you can get if you're doing a live lesson. They can still take the quiz in the self paced lesson and you still get the information. Um, so, how can I use Nearpod? Um, again, creating a quiz, it'll create um, a report for you. You can maybe give them the same quiz later and it will see if uh, see how they've done at maybe towards the end. So you could do a quiz at the beginning to see their prior knowledge and then at the end to see what they've learned, how far they've come. Um, Self-assessments, there's a poll feature. Uh, and so you can adjust your presentation based on the poll and uh, modeling. Uh, use the draw feature like a whiteboard. Uh, this is great for math or sketch noting, and you can see the work as it's being done. So, for example, create a sketch note. So, a sketch note is sort of like a drawing for those visual students, um, even your tactile learners. Uh, this helps them uh, create a sketch note to help you remember uh, that Mexico is below the U.S. and Canada is above the U.S. So uh, you will go into your drawing. It's up on your screen. Your trackpad is how you would draw on your paper. And uh, some of these students do amazing drawings. I never grade them on their drawings because I always make sure I do one that uh, is really bad because I'm not a good artist. <laughs> My stick people don't even look great. So yeah, there you go, Katie. And see, I can see Katie's progress as she is doing this drawing. And Nicole, um, it tells me that these are in progress. So what that means is when I can see what they're doing and when they are done, they'll click submit and it will tell me that they are finished. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. There you go, Sherry. See, that is a sketch note. It doesn't have to be a complete drawing, but yes, um, Sherry has submitted hers. You can see that it, you know, says you, yes, uh, Melissa, you've changed the color of yours and that's perfectly fine. So students can, you know, be a little creative with this and um, sketch noting, it really helps them remember things. So uh, that's why I really like sketch noting. There you go, Molly. Oh yeah, Molly's getting, that's great, Molly. I could, mm. I could actually tell what all that is. <laughs> if I drew that, it, it would be, whoo. Um, yeah, there you go. Y'all are getting the hang of it. Yay, Judy, I love your person. Okay, keep smiling, Anna, thank you. Because I've been pretty nervous doing this. Uh, all right, Paula, yeah, Canada, you got US, you got Canada. Yep, you put in words, you typed in um, text boxes and you can actually type words in. That's exactly 
Um, y'all see, y'all figured out a lot of these features. And so you see that this is really pretty cool uh, for kids uh, to use, that you can figure it out, that, you know, they can, hi Kim. Um, so yeah, oh yeah, Sam put in a map of the United States, <laughs> me and them, okay, love it. Um, oh, Amy, yeah. I have my dog laying on the floor with me. My cat is scratching out to get out here with me. Um, so yeah, north, south, great. Awesome. Oh, Nicole, is that because we're sick uh, of what's going on? The, the, the COVID-19? All right, yeah, Tara, there you go. Awesome job, y'all, that is really, really good. So I am going to kind of stop here and check for any questions, anything in the chat box. And so if you have a chat question, if you go back to that tab and let's see if there's anything I can answer. Yes, I can. Um, yes, Diane, I can show you how to insert a Nearpod slide, a Nearpod slide into Google Slides. Yes, the, and there are videos to do that. Um, as a matter of fact, Diane, I will show you right now. Um, let me let me go to a pre presentation that I have done, and I will pull one up for you. For those of you who are following me, as you can see, here are the template gallery right here and all kinds of different templates that you can do, personal, general, recipe books, work stuff. Okay. Let me go into one I've done. Okay, so here's one I did on World War One. So if I wanna turn this into a Nearpod, it's really pretty easy. I went to add-ons and as soon as it finishes loading and there's a Nearpod add-on. So I click that. I'm gonna open Nearpod. Waiting for it to open. Okay, so here, audio, I can add audio in, um, video from BBC, um, the Collaborate tool, which we haven't gotten to yet. There's a draw it right there, okay? Um, take them on a virtual field trip or um, vocabulary. Uh, fill in the blank. We'll talk more about these things later. For you math people, there's Desmos, the graphing calculator already here. Uh, matching pairs. So it's like flashcard kind of things, matching them up. Memory test, where were these, the, the matches? Where were the pairs? Um, Nearpod in 3D, I'll show you some of these features. Open-ended question, you can upload PDFs right into it. Poll, quiz, um, slideshows, uh, Sway, and Time to Climb is a game, video, or web content. So if I wanted to upload a video, Okay, I, I can go in and search YouTube uh, for World War I videos, how World War I got started. So, okay, so I'm going to choose that video and save it. Okay, and now... When, um, when I'm done with this presentation, I can click save and go to Nearpod and I've just created a Nearpod. That's how easy it is. So if you create a slideshow, um, that's an easy way. Or you can create these lessons straight in Nearpod, okay? Um, but yeah, I hope that when, when you get into Nearpod, this video would be right there, click play and it plays. 
So I hope I answered that question for you, um, Diane. Let's see. Um, yeah, how will you load up your Nearpod into Google Slides? Um, Valerie, that's what I was just showing. Like I did my Google Slides and there's a Nearpod add-on, okay? And so you can get that from the, the store and uh, like the, the Google Store, uh, Play Store, and I add that. And like I say, it opens up a tab here and I can import a poll. I can import audio, video, um, anything I want to put in here at this point, a quiz, whatever. Um, like I say, when I'm done, then I click save and go to Nearpod. It will take me into Nearpod where I can uh, get the codes for self-paced and um, live feeds. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what Sway is. Uh, some of these things are new since I've, I've used it last. Um, well, let's see. The drawing feature is great. Yes, I do love the drawing feature. Um, anything else? I think we're good. Okay. So, um, and this can be used, like I say, for all uh, levels of students. All right, so back in, y'all did a great job with your drawings. Wonderful. You can uh, use Nearpod for open-ended tasks. So you can have them write, okay, or draw. So that open-ended, you can put a question up there and have them write uh, an open-ended response. Have them work on their introductory paragraph, okay, or a body paragraph. Um, so that can be done right in there. Uh, for you math people, here's a, a little um, thing about when you are using it here. You can see they have graph paper like in the drawing feature. And you see like I sh saw each of you as you were drawing. Here is them um, plotting, graphing. OK, math is not my thing. But and with Desmos now uh, in it incorporated into the. Um, the tools, then that makes it easy. Now, let's say this is a live lesson and which it is, and I want to add an activity. I can come right up here now and add any, um, add one of these activities to the lesson immediately on the fly. Cause maybe I'm seeing students aren't getting it. So this is how I can go in and I can add a slide if I needed to. Okay. Um, see oh, let's see um yeah see i'm not let's see i'm gonna do text that would be easier for me you don't want to see me draw okay um let's see i'm gonna draw it you are I'm doing this on the trackpad because I don't have my mouse out here with me. Okay. So, so I can add that into um, my, I can add that into my presentation. So yeah, I want to end that activity. Okay. Um, okay. So next we have uh, a feature that my ELA or even elementary teachers would like. Uh, fill in the blanks. So you can take your text, paste it here, and then there is a word bank and students have to figure out what word goes in what sentence where it needs to go. So you paste it up here, then you cut the word out and there would be a word bank, say down at the bottom. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing. Science teachers could use it. Um, history teachers, lots of ways to use that. So again, some of the features, matching pairs, quiz, draw it. Now collaborate is one where we have, there's the open-ended question, this is collaborate. So it's sort of like making the post-it where you can put pictures or you enter a topic uh, or a picture or something, tell them what to do and they have to respond. And so it's like putting big post-its where kids can respond and feed off of each other. 
and their responses. So here's the open-ended question. As you can see, you can add video, audio, a PDF, web content, put in a question, and then students will type. Okay. Field trips. You can use these with the um, Nearpod VR or one of those virtual reality um, players that you know you put on and like you turn around and you see everything in, in like 3D, uh, like as if you're really there. And there's lots of these virtual field trips. Uh, you don't need the VR to be able to do it or the, the glasses to be able to do it. You can actually um, do it uh, on your keypad and I'm gonna show you that in a few minutes. When you do student pacing, again, this is how you would um, send it out in student pacing. Um, they have a library of lessons already done for lots of different topics. Okay, so whether you're a CTE teacher, whether you're ELA or ELL teachers, there's actually ELL lessons in here. Um, skill builders, all kinds of things and they even have their own tutorials on how to use Nearpod uh, done by their people okay so um, yeah that's this is where you can add an activity this is time to climb this is done through face-to-face uh, -face live lessons and you what is the equation of the line so this is a math one they put the the picture here and um, there are the answer choices. So it's kind of like Kahoot where students will click what answer they think is best and their person then kind of runs up the hill and it's sort of a race. And my high school kids, they're mainly juniors and seniors and they still loved it. Okay. Um, again, for you math people that are wondering how you can use this, you know, cause you think math doesn't, it doesn't work well. Uh, yeah because of the Desmos calculator now being integrated and that's a new thing. I haven't used it because again, I'm not a math person, but I'll be glad to help you figure it out. Um, so that is the Desmos is the graphing calculator that's used on SAT, ACT, all the um, state testing, it's integrated into it. So uh, that's there, that's a new feature, which I think is really cool. Okay, now I have a video and notice that it says this device only, meaning it will show only on my device, or I can click all devices. Um, so uh, this is, um, if I click all devices, you can see it from your device as well as my device, okay? So I'm gonna kinda um, uh, click. So this is just a short little video here. In addition to running a Nearpod session as a class activity, you can also assign Nearpods for students to do outside of school or if you are going to be absent and want to assign a Nearpod for the students to do at their own pace, you can do that as well. So what you're going to do is if you log into Nearpod and you go to my library, you're going to look for the lesson that you want to run in a student pace mode. And when you hover on the lesson, you'll see an option underneath live lesson that says student paste. You click on student paste and this will generate a different group code to join this Nearpod than the one that you would normally use for a live lesson. And you can see below here, it gives you automatically um, a valid time frame for when the students are going to be able to use this. By default, it's automatically set up to about 30 days. Um, but if you want to change that so that the students don't have access to it after a certain point, you can do that. Or if you want to set it up um, a few days in advance and you want to post date it, you can do it as well. So let's say I only want my students to have this for a week. I hit apply. And now this is the group code that I'm going to give to my students. And you can just give this to the students in OneNote or in Moto, however you would um, give information to your students. So as an example, let's pretend that I'm a student and I'm going to be going through this Nearpod. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go to a different browser completely. We're pretending I'm a student here now and I'm going to put in that group code. And that was an old login screen, by the way. The difference here is that as a student now, I'm going to be able to navigate through this on my own. So I join it and you can see as a student, I now have these arrows so that I can navigate back and forth between 
between the session, whereas if I was participating in this as a live lesson in the classroom, I wouldn't have these controls. Here you see the notes feature right here. Um, of course, I don't see it on mine, but you can see it right here. That would click, uh, kick out the notes and students could take notes there. Calls available to me. I click on here and I get to participate in these activities and submit it when I'm done. And then from the teacher standpoint, the teacher will be able to view the results. It will time stamp it and it will also display um, how much time each one of the students spent on each slide. So I'm going to show you that in another video so that you can view what the results are going to look like. And running a, a student session is pretty easy. Um, it's just a matter of getting the group code for it and posting it so your students can access it. Okay. So um, I hope uh, that helped a little bit maybe. So for the self-pace, what it would do. Um, so this is uh, sort of a short uh, video here on the answers, uh, how you can get information, how the kids did, um, the, the reports that come out of Nearpod. Now that I've taught a Nearpod lesson with my students, I can reflect on my teaching and analyze valuable formative assessment data with Nearpod reports. To access my lesson reports, I click on the report button at the bottom of the Nearpod screen. From here, I can see a report from every time I've launched a Nearpod lesson with my class. Let's dig into one of these reports. When I enter a report, I can see student participation, class quiz results, and individual student data when I scroll down. If I click into one of the activity types at the top of the report, I can see responses from each of my students. Here I've clicked the draw it tab and if I click on individual student responses, I can see their answers for each drawing activity. Check out Nearpod reports for greater insight into student learning and so the reports are really good, uh, especially for self-paced. So if you're worried about how am I going to have to go and grade all this, it puts it all in one place for you. And you can um, actually download that if you needed to. Okay. Um, skipping that slide. All right. This is the virtual uh, field trip here. And I'm going to click this. This one was, uh, this is kind of cool. Um, so you can take any of their virtual field trips. This is part of their library. And when you add it to your library, you can take out slides. You can make, it'll make a copy of it and you can take out things like, for example, slide two is all teacher stuff. Okay. See, this is the teacher um, PDF copies of everything and the kids don't need to see that. So you could take that slide out if you decided to use this and make your, um, and you would make a copy of it. Now, there's an essential question. There's your learning objectives. Okay, so uh, this is that open response. Uh, represents your answer in words, sentences, pictures, and or symbols. And so this virtual field trip, I know I'm going kind of going fast. Um, I'm gonna click on the picture and now I'm using uh, my arrows. The up arrow, the down arrow, Moving to the right, panning to the right, it's 360. And of course I can go back to the left. One of the things that I kind of thought was cool is that on my, my trackpad, if I put my fingers together and like spread them out, notice that I'm able to zoom in, okay? So this is their virtual field trips. This would be with those uh, uh, VR goggles and you don't have to have the VR goggles to be able to do it. But uh, if you've never had kids who've been to a place, this would give them that opportunity. Okay. Then fill in the chart with your observations, share the chart with a partner, which you, you know, don't have to do if you're on a um, virtual lesson. And of course, there are videos that you can embed or they have embedded and then an open ended question. And then it says, let's create. So it says create a poster. Um, here they can create their poster right here, all in uh, Nearpod, which is really uh, a great feature. Okay. Um, keeps everything in one place. Now, these last few uh, 
few slides here uh, are videos, as you can see, using it uh, in the virtual classroom, a basic overview. I'm not going to go through these. How to create a Nearpod presentation. And this is slides, Nearpod Google slide integration. Um, so you can create slides and turn it into a Nearpod, or you can go into Nearpod and create your own presentation that way. So I've shown you both of those. Now, how can you access this after we're done? That's where the self-paced code comes in. And that code is open for 30 days. So uh, you've got plenty of time to go back in and look at that. I don't want to take up our time doing that. So uh, let's, I'm going to go back to chat and our comments and see if there's any questions before we move on into our last piece, which is Google Sites. Okay. Um, okay. So, how will we differentiate for students who do not have Wi Fi? Um, if we do have it, you can print it out. Yes, you can print out the slides, Valerie. Um, so, that's not a problem. Um, uh, collaborate, yes, is like Padlet inside of Nearpod. Um, I was asked, is Desmos with the paid or uh, free version? Diane, I'm really not sure because, again, that was new to me when I went into it. Uh, but I, I can uh, email Nearpod and find out and get back with you. So uh, is there a short video we can send to students uh, how to use this? Yes. Yes, there is. It's And actually, Kim, you could actually make your own um, using Screencast. Or I'm happy to make one uh, and share it with you. Uh, that's not a big deal. This, like I say, this is really easy to use. It's just like that lady said, put in the code. You could actually share that video. Um, they get the code, put it in, and move through the lesson. Um, but I'm happy to do that. Okay. Um, is there any? All right. Looks good. I think I've hit everything, or Paulette or Katie has <laughs> helped me out here, and I thank y'all very much. Um, so, one last thing that we're going to do today is Google Slides Sites. Now, um, I created this presentation and put it on a Google site just for you to see how kind of easy it is to maneuver, all right? And I created a screencast where I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to make a Google site. And so I'm going to click our little pop-out. So it's going to take, take it to its own tab. And then I am going to play. Okay. Hey, good morning. Um, Whoops. Or good day. Uh, I'm here right now and I am doing a screencast where I'm going to show you how to create a Google site. A Google site is very much like your own web page. And I use this uh, for my class where my students can go on for every unit and the assignments are there, supplemental information is there, uh, you know, absenteeism is a huge problem with many of our students at the high school. So this is a way that they can stay current even if they're out for an extended period of time or a sickness. If you hear noise in the background, it is probably the kitten and the dogs playing. So I apologize. All right, so what first we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to the nine little dots, the Google apps, and we are gonna just open drive, okay? So when we open drive, we're gonna come over to new. And when we click the new, you typically see docs, sheets, slides, and we're gonna click more. When we click more, whoops, sorry. When I hover over more, there we go. And you can see forms, drawings, maps, and here you see sites. So we're gonna click on Google Sites right there. And it's taking a second to load. Okay, so here we have a blank Google site. You can title your site anything that you want to. So I am going to title this how to make a Google site. Um, 
the one that I use for my students, we uh, I just title it American History 2 because that's what I teach. Or you could uh, title it with your name, anything like that. I also come up here where it says enter site name and I might put my name um, in that. Sorry, that's going to bother me. There we go. And you notice up here that it's titled up here crank. Um, and I can come in here and let's do crank P, whoops, uh, PD, since this is uh, professional development. Now, on this page, this is your front page. You, your Google site can be just one page or it can be multiple pages. So if you, uh, we can change the background, we can change the image back here. You can upload your own image or you can uh, select an image. I'm going to hit upload. This is where you would pull it off of your drive. So, uh, for example, I'm just going to pull this picture and insert it. And it's a big picture of me. Notice that it adjusts for readability. You can stretch this out. Okay, make it you know wider. You can center it. Um, you can do lots of things. Now down here, there's nothing. Um, so you can add text box. You can add images. Uh, on my website that I use for my students, I have an introduction to the class, like what it kind of is, and then I have a calendar of events. And my calendar of events would be due dates of uh, when projects are due, when they might be assigned, when tests are going to be. So right on the front page, they can see that. And I really like using Google Sites this way for parents to have access. Uh, I loved Google Classroom, but parents didn't have access to Google Classroom. So this was a way that my parents could access everything that I have. All right, so down here, um, okay, as we scroll down here, you can see that there are different designs that uh, formats that you can use on your page, or you can put in a table of contents. You can add a Google slideshow and have it playing the whole time on your front page uh, or any page. You can add buttons, so links that they can go straight to a page. Uh, YouTube videos, there's the calendar. Uh, and you can, of course, add Google Docs or anything like that. So let's add a text box here. And you see that it added a text box, and we have normal uh, font. It could be small. There's heading, subheading, and title. And so let's make this a title. And so I want to center this, and my um, title is going to be uh, introduction. Okay. Once I hit enter, I now can change again the size of the font and I'm going to do this as a heading. Uh, this site is designed to help teachers create their own web sites for students and parents to access virtually. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things over here. You can duplicate this section. You can uh, change the background. Now, regular is just what it is right now. It's white. Emphasis is going to change it slightly, say, to gray. And then this emphasis changes the background to blue, okay? And the text becomes white. Or if you decide you want to scrap it, you can scrap it. You also see that there's some little dots over here. I can move this section anywhere. So if I created another section down here, another text box or an image, and I want to rearrange them, I can easily do that. Now, let's look at how to add a page. So here we're going to add a page. And we are I'm going to have to move my, there we go. All right. So we're going to click this uh, star button and the plus, and it says add new page or 
put in a link. So we're going to add a new page. And uh, so uh, let's call this creating the page. Now, I don't like that background up here. So let's say I want to change the image. Um, I can upload an image. Whoops. Sorry, I meant to hit select. Let's hit select image. This is where I can actually go and search uh, drive. I can search on the internet. And so I'm just searching for pages. Okay. And you can see everything that's here. And I'll just select that one. Now change the whole background. All right. It adjusts the background so that you can read the words on the page so that it, the background doesn't overpower the words. And, you know, that's a problem a lot of times when you use Google Slides or things like that, that the background takes over the, the words and you can't read it very well. OK, so on this page, we're going to come back over here to insert. And let's say I want to. Um, embed a website okay well I can embed the website by usually by the URL code well I'm not really sure um, what uh, the URL is so I'm going to come into uh, or better yet I can come down here to YouTube and I can video search for YouTube creating a Google site and it's going to find on the web things that I can use. So how to create a website in Google Sites, it's free. How to create your first Google site, new Google sites for beginners, um, the new Google sites, a tutorial. So I want to find one that, that's kind of recent. So we're going to click this one right here. And when I click select, it automatically puts this video on the page. I don't have to worry about a web address, uh, anything like that. So you can actually go on and click play and it would play right where it is, all right? This button right here is the preview button. The preview button lets you see what the page would look like to someone outside coming in, like a student or a parent. And so there is the video. Now, if I uh, click on the video, my name is Siti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, I'm going to on. So there you go. You see that the video plays. All right. So I want to get out of this and I can just exit preview and I'm right back into my teacher page where I can see it. Of course, you've got your undo and redo the last action um, up here. Uh, let's say you want to. Um, you want to add a button. The button is going to be sort of like a a, um, a link to somewhere. So this would automatically take you to that page. So I am going to uh, take you to my page. So when I click that, now there is a, a button. Notice that I could drag that and expand that out. And I don't know if you can see the little lines that are on it, that area. That tells you kind of how far you can go. So it automatically sets up a border for you. So I can, that button can be extremely long or it can be small, all right? So, when I click that button now, when we are in preview mode or when somebody is viewing this page, they click that, it's gonna take them straight to my website and they can see exactly what my website looks like. Now, when I was going to add that button and I created a title and I came down here to link, did you see that it automatically pulls up pages that are here on my site? So if I wanted to link this back to the home page, all I have to do is click that. Let me just change this to home. 
and click insert. And by clicking that button, it will automatically take me right back to my homepage. So it's really that simple. You can uh, add Google Docs in here. A lot of my students, they will create something in Google Drive and they come over here to Drive and it shows you, say, what they have created. And see, these are the sites right here, second bell, third bell, fourth bell. I have my students create a uh, Google site where they post work for every unit that we do. There are certain assignments I make them post to their web page. So I'm teaching them some uh, digital skills that they can use later. Um, so let's just suppose uh, that's the folders in my drive. I can look in share drives or what's shared with me. This is uh, recent work that I've opened. Um, so this is a, a review assignment one of my students did since we were virtually learning and noticed that I imported it right straight here. Okay, so you can do uh, sheets, uh, spreadsheets, you can do slides can be easily imported. And I do this a lot for my students. I screencast my lectures and put them on a Google page. Listen to me explaining the information without having to be in class. Uh, students have told me that they really like this, that it helps them kind of work at their own pace, taking their notes and being able to stop it and rewind it or if a student's out, they're still not missing the instruction. They're hearing everything that I really need to tell them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if you want to, you can always use one of the layouts. For example, here's a layout where you would uh, add a picture or a video and then put text underneath of it, explaining it like a title and then information about it. Uh, so that's something. But let's just say I want to move this up. So as you see, I grab it and I can move it and I want to put it say here at the top. There you go. That's pretty much all there is to do with this. Uh, it's not that hard. Now in order for anybody to see anything that you do, you have to click publish. All right. So if I click publish, um, it's going to give me my web address and I'm going to do crank PD. Okay, so there's the web address, uh, sites.google.com slash curtug.k12.nc.us slash crankpd. That's a lot for people to remember. So I also use bit.ly, B-I-T-L-Y dot com. And using bit.ly dot com, I can take any URL and shorten it and even personalize it. So the, like the code to my class website was cranks. AH2. That's a whole lot easier for people to remember than all this right here. Okay, so um, notice that says it, who can view my site? Anyone at curtalk.k12.nc.us. Well, let's say I want to change that. I want it so parents can be able to see it and not all of them are going to have a Curtalk address. So I change this. And I say anyone can find and view the public version uh, or only specific people. So you could create this website for uh, colleagues of um, PLC and put uh, information up there that can be shared. And then it's only certain people who can see this information. All right. But if I want parents to be able to see it, like I say, a lot of them don't have a curta dot k12 dot nc dot us web address or email so i would anyone can find and view the published version i will save that okay and uh therefore i can click done um notice that it says request public search engines do not display my site so if i don't want really people finding it when they Google things or search engines, I can click that. And when I click publish, it's there. Now, anytime you use a Google Doc, so when I pull this out of Google Docs, if you try to go on right now and view it as a student, you're not gonna be able to see it. 
anything that's done in docs has to be shared. And so usually when I create anything using any Google uh, product, any Google app, I automatically share it. So here's the here's uh, Thomas's timeline that he did. Now I can't share it from here, but I can go into my drive. I can double click and pull it up. Whoops, sorry. Um, I'm gonna have to go back into drive. Apologize. So we go back into Drive, we pull this up and share just like you would share anything else. Go to the share with others. Okay. And that's that's how you would do it. I always make it so anybody can view it if they have the link. Okay. Again, when you go into Drive and you try to share something, okay, like how to use Nearpod, for example. Notice that right now the share says locked. So nobody can see this but me because I'm the creator. So when I click share, okay, the easiest thing for me to do is I get a shareable link, okay? And notice again, it says anyone at Curta can view. Well, I want it to be that anyone with the link can view. Okay, no sign in required. So I save it and then I click done. Now, if I post that onto a website, which I have, <laughs> then you will be able to see this and anyone that gets on my website can see this. So I don't have to worry about sharing it with individual people and typing in a whole bunch of names or anything like that. Okay, um, I know that our time is about up. Um, I'm gonna look at the chat and see if there are any questions, but please know that um, on this page, reminders, when you're publishing, you have to make sure it's shared if you've taken it out of your drive or nobody can see it. You have to publish the site after every change. There is a link right there to my uh, class website where I have all my information, please uh, feel free to go see my site and sites are really easy, like I say, to do. And I would suggest, of course, personalizing the um, your link to make it easy for people to remember. So um, that is pretty much it. And let me see if there are anything in the chat that I need to um, maybe address. Uh, I think you can, Heather, transfer the old one to the new one, okay? Um, I think I have done that, actually. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, public sites are different than closed communication with students. Um, you can make your site, Valerie, open to the public, um, only in the fact that um, anybody with the link can see it. I mean, they can't go to it if you put in, like, check where I said that it's not going to be found in search engines. Or when uh, with your site, you can put in the student names. So if you're worried about um, uh, being able to use it for your class, you know, the copyright stuff, if you can email it to your students that way and give them access now, uh, and so that they can view it or just give them the link to your site and only they will be able to see it. I just don't always like doing it with the K-12, the Kurtuk thing because uh, some of our um, students are using personal devices and it's not a, or they're on their phone and uh, a parent or whatever and so they don't have that Kurtuk address, okay? Um, uh, yes, you can, yes, create the, um, does all of this co copyright rules that we talked about yesterday. Um, yeah, Katie, I really think that it does because if we're, we're not putting it out there and violating the copyright laws, if we're just really letting our students use it and nobody can find it unless you give them the link. And so you really want your kids to have it. They need it then that's a way in which um, uh, you do it. 
Um, Melissa, do you suggest we make a new site for these next few weeks? That is totally up to you. Um, I, I did. And like I say, I have, um, mine is already done, but you can, you can do that. And then you can add to it. When I first started using sites, Melissa, it was in the middle of a school year and or a middle of a semester. So I did um, start it and then added to it. And so now I have the entire semester online uh, for my students. Okay, so uh, let's see. Um, uh, thanks everybody. Um, can I lock pages down on the website without locking down the whole website? Um, no, not really. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by lockdown. What uh, what exactly do you need locked down? Uh, like I say, uh, Valerie, email me or uh, we can meet outside of this and figure that out. Um, settings are pretty much the same. Mm, yes, Sandy's right. There are questions about uh, creating sites that are on the Google One exam. Um, so, okay, meaning I would only publish everyone's, publish to everyone pages that did not have copyright. Um, yeah, you, I mean, the settings are pretty much for every, the whole site, not for page by page. Can you publish the site in some pages? Yes, uh, Jill, you can. Um, actually, I have right now some of my semester assignments are not up there, the assignment pages are not there, you can hide those pages from navigation. Or you can and then and re um, go back in, put them in for navigation. Okay. Um, okay, y'all. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. And I hope this helped. And please don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions. Um, if I can help you with screencasting or uh, whatever it is you need. Okay. Thanks. Stay safe. Bye everybody. And I'm here if you have any other questions. Okay. I'll stay on for a few more minutes.